Okay, today I'm going to be showing you how to track a button click as a conversion into Google Ads. So it will allow you to track any button click. I'm going to show you exactly how to figure out how to track this. So it may vary depending on your website. So I'm going to go over the Google Tag Assistant and how we can actually see what the different variables are when we do click a button on our website. So I just set up this button very simply. It is through, I have Elementor installed. So I have the button here. The text on the button is track this button. As you can see, I have no icon. And then I just set the link for right now is basically nothing so the the button is linked but it just stays on this page just so we can kind of see that it does something when we actually click on the button obviously you can use this for like an outbound link or if you're trying to get somebody to a specific landing page or something like that that's more valuable on your website so the very first thing you need to do obviously is to actually have your button live on your website like this one so we have our button here and then what we want to do is we want to come over to google tag manager and you want to make sure google tag manager is installed on your website so go to the admin section of google tag manager if you haven't created a Tag Manager account already, then you want to set this up now. And then you want to install Google Tag Manager and put these two pieces of code on your website. The first one goes as high as possible under the opening head tag. The second one goes immediately after the opening body tag. So you can see the two pieces of code that we have here. And if we come to the back end of my website, the way that I generally do this is with the WP code plugin. So it says code snippets on the left hand side, but the plugin itself is WP code. So if you go to the plugin store, add new plugin, search WP code, see this blue logo there and just install this. This has been the easiest way for me to install Google Tag Manager and also install any custom custom code snippets that I need to. So on the code snippets on the left hand side, we click on header and footer, and that is going to open up our header and our footer here, which well, I did have these installed on both, but we'll make sure we installed it on both. So we have our, oh, there it is. So within our header, we have our first piece of code and then under the body tag. So this is immediately after the opening body tag. This is exactly where you want to install Google Tag Manager. So click on save changes once you add both of these pieces of code to your website. So you can copy these here and then add each of them to your website. Make sure you click on save changes and make sure you put them in the right spot using the WP code plugin. And then from there you have Google Tag Manager installed on your website. So now we are ready to create our conversion action and make sure that we're tracking this button properly. So let's come over to Google Ads and we're in our Google Ads account here and we wanna come over to goals, conversion and summary. And from this page, what we want to do is create a new conversion action. You can see I have a bunch of conversion actions in here just from the tutorials I'm creating. We'll delete a lot of them, but let's start tracking our conversions here. And what we want to track is a website conversion and we can enter our domain name here. So you can enter whatever if you want, but we're going to enter our domain name, click on scan. But what we really want to do is add a conversion action manually. So they'll say it's a link to Google analytics. You can use Google analytics. I'll show that in follow up videos. I'll also have a very long conversion tracking tutorial coming out but we just want to add a conversion action manually here select a goal for the conversion action and this is where you want to select the correct goal so page view other it could be an outbound click maybe it is something with get directions maybe it's a directions button request quote that is a popular one where somebody's requesting a quote so let's just pre pretend we have a button on our website and somebody actually clicks on this and they go to our quote request page and I just want to track that as a conversion now this could be considered a pre conversion and this is something I will set up from time to time especially in new accounts because really you're trying to get some type of conversion data in so if somebody goes to your website and clicks on contact us or book an appointment or request a quote then they're at least showing some type of intent to complete a conversion with you even if they don't get to the next step it is still a pre conversion so that's a lot of times how I'll use use something like this tracking a button click so let's come back over here to Google Ads and we're just gonna do quote request we'll say this is a primary action used for bidding optimization I want to take a quick break from my video tutorial to tell you about my two free training videos. My first is my one, two, three, four, five Google ads training that will give you a process to be successful with Google ads. Go to surfsidepppc.com slash training to get access to that. The other one is going to be my from zero to five K per month roadmap. This is going to be an inbound marketing training. That's going to teach you how to drive more leads and grow your business. So you go to surfsideinbound.com and you can access that one. Let's get back to our tutorial. 
okay and then we will use the same value for each conversion just count it as one so i'm just going to count it as a one dollar conversion every time it tracks you could enter a higher value here if you want to set a different value for this conversion for count you definitely only want to do one for button clicks because if somebody clicks on like 20 buttons unless every single button click is valuable which i would assume it's not you really just want to count it as one because if it's the same person clicking buttons then it's you don't want to count it as multiple conversions the click-through conversion window we can extend this if we want it's automatically set at 30 days basically it just widens the conversion window of how long it tracks engage view view through we'll just leave these as is attribution data driven and then enhanced conversions you want to be managed through the google tag and then we can click on done and now we can click on save and continue so through save and continue it's going to say set up with a google tag probably create a tutorial just showing how to do that just so people who are using a google tag can do that Otherwise, using Google Tag Manager is what we want to select here. So we just installed Google Tag Manager, and now we have our conversion ID and our conversion label down here. So we come over to Google Tag Manager, click on the X here, go to Workspace, and we want to create a new tag. The very first tag you need to add is the conversion linker tag. So if you come over here to Google Ads, you'll see next steps. Make sure you add a conversion linker tag and configure it to fire on all of your web pages. So usually Google, uh, the Google Tag Manager will tell you that if you don't have the conversion linker tag and you set up a Google Ads conversion tag. But if we click on new here and we go to tag configuration, click on Google Ads and click on conversion linker and then just trigger this for all pages. So conversion linker on all pages. We don't need this since we already have it there. You can see I have it set up. So basically just add a new tag. So you could do that right at the top here. Or if you are in your overview, you can also add a new tag by clicking here. So the next thing that we want to do, and you want to make sure you do this is make sure you have all your variables enabled. I think there's a couple videos I created where I didn't say this, uh, but if we click on configure here, make sure you have these click and forms all enabled. So that will allow us to actually see, see a little bit more data within our variables and make sure that we can use those variables when we're actually tracking this conversion. So we have all of those set here as well. So let's come over here to our tags and we wanna create our new tag. So we are gonna do button click example. We're gonna do tag configuration. And now this is where you enter your conversion ID and your conversion label. So what we got previously here, our conversion ID from Google Ads, come over to Google Tag Manager, paste that conversion ID there, come back to Google Ads, copy this one, come over here and paste that conversion label. So now we have conversion ID, conversion label, time to set our trigger. So you can see I have a few different triggers set up here already, but if we click on the X, and actually we want to stay in here we click on the plus sign here we want to create a new trigger so we click here on trigger configuration and you're going to see click and this is either going to say all elements or just links so if we click on all elements here we could do some clicks and this is basically how we're going to track this before we do this what i want to show you is your button may track slightly different so let's just trigger this on all pages for right now we're not going to submit our container yet just need to set a trigger for that you do not want to make sure you're, you're setting that otherwise it's going to count as a conversion for every single page view but what we want to do is we want to open up the google tag assistant so the preview button up here will open up the tag assistant and basically just copy the url so i'm going to copy this pool liner replacement page that i have here copy that we're going to click open up that page and it's going to op keep this page open as the Google tag assistant. So it's actually showing which ones of our tags are firing. So our button click example did fire. That is okay. What we want to do now is I came down here and I linked this button just, just basically to nothing, but it is linked. So if we click on it, it's going to actually have some action that it does. So when we come back over here to tag assistant, what you're going to see is we have a link click here. So that was the link click we just did. So we're going to do it one more time. You'll see it again. So click on it again and we come back over and you'll see another link click here. So when you do that and you see this link click, this is what we want to track. And what you can do is look at the variables here. So you can see what the events are, gtm.link click, the click class, so you can see that right here, the click element. So this is usually a very long string, the click element. So the easiest way to me to actually track this is to track the click text, the actual text itself track. But if you look here, you'll see click URL, click target, different things that we're actually tracking here. So some of these may look a little bit different, even GTM link click, for example. But the main thing is you need a variable that is unique to this button. And for that, for this button itself, it is this click text. So we come back over so we can exit tag assistant. We'll come back over to tag manager. 
Okay, so from over here, we want to come back to our tags. So hopefully this all makes sense, kind of trying to make it make a little bit more sense why we're setting this up the way we are. So we click on triggering here, you're going to see our firing trigger. Let's get rid of this one. Let's click on the plus sign trigger configuration. We're going to do all elements. You could do just links, but we're gonna do some clicks. And now you'll see a bunch of these here. So click ID, click target, click text, click URL, some of the different things that we were looking at. In this one, we're going to select click text contains, or we could do equals, and we have track this button. You could also do equals, so we could just keep this as equals, track this button, set it exactly like the text that showed in the variable that we just did. So the button, we're going to say track this button trigger, okay, and we'll click on save and save again. And now let's submit our workspace. So we'll just say new version, okay, and we will publish this. So now we have this published and if we come back over to our workspace and we take our url one more time so the pool liner replacement page and we go to google tag assistant again click on preview okay so we come into this page now and if we come over to the tag assistant first you can see now this is not the tag is not tracking now so you'll see just the conversion linker desktop phone calls only tracks when somebody has a 30 second phone call this is the same conversion i just did a separate tutorial tags not fired so you'll see mobile calls text message email thank you page example one google analytics for event so a bunch of different things that haven't tracked yet here is the one that we want right here so button click example so let's come back over here and we'll click on our button so we click on it okay it registered and now you'll see button click example is now tracking as a Google ads conversion. And now we can actually optimize for this within our campaigns just to make sure our other ones are working. Let's just come over to tag assistant. We will do our mobile phone call conversion here. Okay. So we click that one. We'll do our text message conversion here. We click that one, click on cancel and we come back over and now you can see all of these tags have fired. So thank you page not fired. These ones are set the text message and mobile phone calls examples are set to only track when somebody's on a mobile device. The other ones are not set that way. So that's why those ones are tracking. The other ones are not, but the most important one button click example here, very easy to do it. Just basically set up the actual text on your button. Now there are other ways to do this. If you're sending people to a specific landing page and depending on how you are actually using your button but the way i've had the most success is just doing this and if you have a similar button everywhere on your website where it might be learn more or request a quote or schedule an appointment or something like that you could basically track every button on your website using this method if you only want to track this button on this one singular page what you need to do is go back into your tags and just update your trigger so if we do button click example and our trigger we want this trigger to fire on some clicks when the click text equals track this button and when the page URL and you could even just do contains or you could do equals, but we could do the page URL and I'll just do contains because I only have one page on my website that contains this. I think page URL contains pool line or replacement. You could also do page URL equals and do your entire URL click on save. Now it will only track on that singular page. So this is how to do it. If you want to track it on one button, click one page just to make sure you're tracking that correct button. But this is tracking a button click in Google ads and how we can actually create this conversion. And last, last but not least, the very final thing you want to do is come into your campaign, go into your campaign settings. And from here, what you can do is make sure that through your conversion goals, you are optimizing for that conversion that we just created. I don't know if we actually are. So if you click on change campaign goals, here we go. Request quotes, click on save. And now we are optimizing for that button click example conversion as well. No recent conversions means that Google has already registered that that is tracking on our page. So if you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comment section. Thanks for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. A quick 30 second promotion. If you like my content, I have a Google ads course available, 21 lessons over 10 hours for $34.99. You can access it by going to surfsidepppccom slash course. That will give you all the information you need to run successful Google ads campaigns. If you're interested in learning how to drive more leads for your business, join Surfside Inbound. It's $4.99 a month. It's available on Patreon. It's available through my YouTube membership and you'll get access to all of my premium content, including a five and a half hour inbound marketing course. Thank you. And let's get back to the video.